um, on a Peter Ekomolite and Nicholas Sengova. Gentlemen, when is President Museveni addressing those diplomats yesterday? He says, uh, stop snooping around. And if you're giving money, <laughs> not, um, yeah, why are you giving them cash? That is corruption. I, I, I saw that rather long uh, press release from State House. It was amusing because State House had to even give an explanation why it was longer than the usual um, yeah. uh, press releases. I think the president is becoming actually paranoid. He's been so for, for a very long time. And, and I worry that going forward, we reach a point where, in fact, uh, our president is going to become openly hostile against the West. I see it happening very soon. Mm. Yeah. Um, do you read it the same, John? Because uh, you, you have uh, yeah, the inter interparliamentary union mm. bringing in anything between 1,500 to 5,000 people, mm. uh, foreigners coming to visit here and spend Good for the, the ailing economy. Eh? Yeah, for, for the ailing economy. economy. But you have the police also coming out and giving restrictions mm. on uh, where the opposition should mm. assemble, not assemble. Mm. Mm. The Speaker of Parliament uh, saying, uh, let's be uh, patriotic suspend all this activity until the guests are gone mm. but the idea of demonstrating is to tell the guests that this is the country i've come to this is the truth this is the reality mm. yes um yeah, let me just if i can touch uh, on on the point that a colleague to my left had j just uh, mentioned that he sees Museveni um um starting to resist the west um and denounce it i don't see that happening anytime soon i, I think that this uh, country is in a great deal of trouble uh, economically and therefore, it's uh, going to be increasingly dependent on the West, um, at least for the foreseeable future. So I don't think he um, politically could make such a move. I think it would be rather suicidal. Um, on the notion of whether these um, rallies should be restricted, um, it's a tough call because, on the one hand, I believe in democracy. On the other hand, um, we've seen uh, those who are behind these rallies often attempting to uh, more than, than, than pursue the objective of, of, of democratic ends have actually uh, been looking to disrupt uh, stability in this country. And um, I don't think Uganda should um, have these activities during this week disrupted just for the sake of people who, who are seeking attention. That being said, um, it does provide an opportunity um, for these demonstrators to draw attention to some of the rot and abuse that is occurring in this country. And I think these, these guests should not get a candy-coated version of what Uganda is all about, but, but should get a clearer sense of the rot that is occurring in this country. I think you think the wrong word. Is, 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 is it disruption? Is it's it not. demonstration? Is it putting their point across? Uh, oh no. Well, let's first get back to the president. Of course, uh, President Seven is a master of the mind game. <laughs> And uh, he, he must have picked from his sources that some of the donors, and it's well known the donors have been supporting a couple of NGOs, and these AG NGOs have been making Masters statements, mistresses. Uh, statements that uh, you may say supportive of the FOC and other anti-government activities. So he wants basically to scare these guys in their pants. Most of these envoys want to keep their jobs, <laughs> so mm -hmm. you don't want to be called that you're embarrassing her majesty's government or something so so you start watching your, your step if you have been trying to to encourage these guys with some support here and there so uh, it's, it's a it's, it's a just a smart move but he, he won't go any further than that in terms of antagonizing the west i think within the same week we saw the uh, photographs of the british military people training ugandans and mm. uh, spy planes and so so th that's where real the real relationship is. These other threats are just sparring. Demonstrations is an old story. My only view is that demonstrations or processions can be managed. I believe the police has now the capacity to manage a policy to end without violence if they wish. But <laughs> I think there's a, there's, there's a bit of mix between fear and wanting to let it go. So in the process, then these people lose their nerves and then you end up with the chaos. I don't think there has been a fair attempt to really say if Besija wants to walk from Kasangati to court, let's put our forces and let him walk and see where it starts. And where I think end. somehow there is always an effort to stop him, then some thugs, unemployed people and what have you also jump in. Mm. So, so, so I, I think government has not yet made a clear case that they have tried to have a peaceful procession, but FOC has failed to, to comply. There's only something. Both sides make a mistake somewhere. I, I, I've been told so that government is, discussion. Mm, is having sleepless nights <coughs> because they believe that uh, the ultimate aim of the FOC 
is to walk and watch by Constitution Square and but, create but, but you say there is no appetite in this city to, to walk on state house. Nobody's going to support that. I mean, you guys how, just how, know that it's suicidal. How, how you can't that? dare it. How do you do that? Well, well I, Angelo, <laughs> could you come into this discussion? Uh, one, the president <laughs> accuses the West of uh, spying and says, don't spy, or don't use my people to spy. And, and then um, these rallies and, uh, the, uh, and the IPU. I think the reporter certainly picked the sexier parts of that conversation. Mm. I spoke to someone else who was there and the... In the, the EU delegation had a long list of uh, things, and like on, on I was saying, you know, the um, delegation and its members, including uh, the British, if you like the West in general, uh, they need uh, President Museveni and his government. In fact, it's an illusion. Uh, the people who benefit from uh, this kind of uh, uh, argument that you know there is tension between the West and uh, and this government are mainly securocrats because you know they deal in the paranoia business it's a, a way to expand budgets spy on this and that you heard about that uh, okay i see you have a copy before you that kind of strange letter that the uh, bill you wrote on on uh, behalf of other agencies to you know to the commercial banks you know seeking to to look at the uh, <laughs> to look at the uh, the accounts of one NGO. No, it, look, Uganda has got immense reciprocal leverage. In fact, this is perhaps the only country in Africa that has that kind of leverage. As far as what's uh, unique about it? Well, as far as um, the West goes, and led by America, American foreign policy in in Africa is is largely located in two regions. Maybe now North Africa is coming on stage, but it's mainly Sudan and Somalia. In terms of the Great Lakes, you know, Uganda is a main security partner because traditionally. U.S. foreign policy seeks a hegemon with which to project this power, and they have been working with them seven years, for so many years. That gives them a lot of, of leverage. When you see the president talking like this, it's because his democratic credentials t sort of tilt the balance on behalf of uh, on behalf of uh, his other partners. But I, I think that his position is pretty much secure because they still need him. And I wouldn't worry that this is a this is the the case. People who benefit from this, like I said are largely um, the agencies that are in the security business because you know you need you, you need to, to 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 keep your budgets alive and they are, they create all kinds of boogies what well, this is one of them um nick your take on this you see <coughs> there are many people i'll give you uh, uh, i'll just say there are many people who for instance listen to this radio station and they hear charles mongi and Paggy on radio every day and they're sure that uh is like uh, uh, you see uh, Oprah Winfrey or whoever those people <laughs> and they know you have a lot of money because you now no, they think you're a huge guy <laughs> you're a huge guy with a lot of money and because of uh, they know they hear all these people who host uh, shows get that so similarly when many of the people around this table are talking about the security of Museveni and that, you know, I'm sure when he listens to Ona and, uh, and my brother Angelo, he just shakes his head. There are many people who see him with all these guards and he's talking of crashing and what. But you see, the man might not, might, might not uh, enjoy a full night's sleep like some of you because... There's a problem in the, uh, for for a man who has stayed in power for so I long. I concur with that. You know? Yeah, mm. you know, uh, you might have all these illusions and you say he has survived this, he has survived. They are always coming, but there are fears which he has. And you know, if you look at all these demonstrations we've had uh, from 2005 up to the crowds keep growing bigger. You've just had the situation where um, uh, AIP Ong was was killed, mm. and the president out and said, "Crash!" They went and you know beat up so many people. Then come uh, the day Besiger was in court, uh, there were still crowds. You know, you would have thought that, you know, people are now scared, they are going to be beaten, and the crowds are still growing and growing. What mm. many people do not know is in Museveni's mind. Museveni knows very well, mm. he, know, he knows history very well. A time comes, and Ona has always said this, that, you know, you cannot crash. Mm. There is no Ame, there is no Sabalwanyi, is it Sabagave who mm. can crash? Uh, 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 mm. who can it's crash funny, actual idea uh, whose time has come, you know? 
President Museveni knows about this. Why is his why is his security detail growing bigger and bigger? Ah, they come with all these. The other day I saw some policemen, you know, dressed in uh, the, the, some is it uh, reflector jackets written on evidence collecting team. You know, <laughs> you know, to try and scare, you know, whoever is around, and they're holding they're holding cameras, you know. And then there was this gentleman uh, uh, from uh, Media Center. He says, "Ah, oh, you see." And there were some white guys also. You know, you know how Africans fear white men. Some white guys with dark shades in front of this, directing them. You take that photo, do <laughs> this. And, and this opolot comes from the media center. Oh, those are consultants. <laughs> we have brought in consultants to, to, to collect evidence. So you have been taking people to court all these days. You have not been collecting evidence. So all these things, he, you know very well that these, uh, I, I don't know what the, those vehicles are called, those big, big huge uh, the APCs. Yeah, 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 mambas. The mambas. They also have cameras, you know. Mm. They also have cameras. It's not the first time we have had cameras. No, I, the crowds keep growing big and Museveni knows these things you know while you're here saying you see uh, people need him and he also knows that the white people who come here these these people who need him and all that he knows very well that they 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 they, 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 involve, they get they get engaged in the double speak you know in all these countries how is it that that uh, for instance in in uh, in Tunisia the man wins the election by this percentage and things go on then uh, within a short period mm -hmm. of time after 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 that the tables have turned they are moving with the with the next so president seven he knows very right well side. they're standing on the right side yeah. of his so president seven he knows very well that That's these white way to play. people from the european union are extremely <coughs> fickle they they are simply about their own interests can i touch on, on that, <laughs> that point if i could can, can i clarify a little bit on, on this uh, paranoia that rodney started with when you see a letter like this, I can read out the letter. It's mm. dated March 16th, 2012. Notice to all commercial banks, credit institutions, and microfinance deposit taking institutions. My attention has been brought to the activities of an NGO called Advocates Coalition for Development and Environment. This is which is suspected to be engaged in suspicious transactions. Pursuant to Section 118 of the Financial Institutions Act 2004 and Section 82 of the Microfinance Deposit Taking Institutions Act 2003. All commercial institutions and microfinance deposit taking institutions with which accord operates any accounts are required urgently to provide particulars relating to accords <laughs> accounts not later than Wednesday, March 21st, 2012. Is that? All financial institutions and MDIs should respond to this circular even in the case of a new report. The response to this circular should be addressed to the Office of the Executive Director. Wow. supervision is now, that, is that mm, from police or from bank of uganda, from bank of uganda. <laughs> one is that the letter is authentic That's interfering with police number two work. is that there's been a discussion running since last year <laughs> about ngos because uh, the government that uh, which nicholas explained very well has been worried that uh, individuals like george soros and others are sending money through civil society groups mm. they have been piling pressure on these european union diplomats through on the deepening democracy program don't give money to uh, to, to, to these political parties. They're actually crying. And there are so many things that have been going on under, which shows that there is real fear, which, uh, of mm. course, the apparatus of security doesn't seem to, uh, to, to, to project. Gentlemen, can we take a quick commercial break and then come back to the discussion? Mm. We'll be right back. It's live. It's hot. Provocative. And digs deep into the issues. It's KFM's Hot Seat. In association with Nile Gold. A crystal malt lager. Beyond an ordinary...